Hey guys, I am Taufik and in this video, let us understand how to write SQL queries using with clause. Now I'm going to explain this concept by writing queries. I'm also going to explain you the syntax and how SQL treats and executes a query having a with clause. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to explain you what are the different advantages of using a with clause and also what is the different scenarios where you should be using a with clause when writing your queries. So please make sure to stay till the end. As always, before I start writing queries, if you like this video, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel and also give a thumbs up. Thank you and let's begin. Okay, so before I start writing queries to explain with clause, there is one thing that you need to remember. A with clause can also be referred to as CTE, which stands for common table expression, and it is also referred to as subquery factoring. So in this video, if I'm going to refer to CTE or subquery factoring or with clause, they basically mean the same. Okay, now I'm going to write two different queries to explain with clause. Let's start with a very simple one. Okay, so let's say I have this employee table and you can see I have six different records here. So these are basically the information of six different employees. So I have the employee ID, I have the employee name and then I have the employee salary. So let's say you have a requirement where you want to fetch only those employees whose salary is greater than the average salary of all the employees in this table. Okay, now in order to write this kind of query, we can straight away write that select star from the employee table and I'm going to give an alias like E and then I just put a filter saying that E dot salary is greater than the average salary. Now everything is fine except that this average salary part because this average salary is not a column, it's not available in your table. So basically we need to write another query which is going to derive this value for us. Now, there are a few ways that we can do this and one of the ways of doing this is by using a with clause. Let's see how we can use a with clause to come up with the average salary and then use that average salary here in order to extract the data that we are trying to extract. So if you're new to SQL, you might have thought that select query or your SQL query should always start with a select clause. But actually that's not true because your SQL query can also start with a with clause. Now let's see how to do that. So whenever you're using a with clause, your with command or your with clause has to be before your uh, main select statement. So I'm just going to use the with clause and then you need to specify the alias. So in this case, I'm just going to use the same alias because the intention of using this with clause here is to identify the average salary. So after that, you just need to mention a list of columns that will be returned. I'm going to explain that in a short while and then you just mention the as command and then you just mention the query that that will calculate the average salary now the query which will calculate the average salary in this case is pretty straightforward I'm just going to use the AVG that is the average aggregate function and then I'm going to mention the column name that is salary and from the table that is employee now that's it so this query here is actually going to fetch me the average salary from this table that is the employee table once I get the average salary I can refer to the data that is written from this query by using this alias and then I can use this alias in my main query as I as if I was just using any other table so I can just use this average salary here and then I can give an alias to that as well and then once I have got that table or that temporary kind of a table here, I can just use any of the columns that were present here. So in this case, the column that is present from this with clause or from this temporary table here is the, okay, I have not mentioned any column name here. So this thing that you mentioned here is basically the list of columns that will be returned from your query. Now this is not mandatory. I can skip this as well and then I can mention the column alias even here as well. But as a good practice, we generally mention the all the list of columns uh, just after the alias in our with clause. So the list of columns here is just one column and I'm just going to call it like average salary and I'm going to access this average salary in my where clause here. Now that's all. So this is my query which will return me the employees whose salary is greater than average salary. Now before I execute, let me explain what's actually happening here. Now, whenever SQL finds that you're trying to execute a query which contains a with clause, it's going to first run the query that is associated with the with clause. So in this case, the first thing that is going to run is this command here, that is this query here. So it's going to calculate the average salary from the employee table, and then it's going to store this data, uh, something like a temporary table. And you can reference to that temporary table by using this alias that is average salary. And then you can, so basically this average salary kind of becomes a temporary table, but it's actually not a temporary table. The reason is the data is actually not stored in the database and SQL is actually not going to create a table by this name. It's just something like 
a kind of a temporary table whose scope will only be until the whole query execution is completed. So until the query execution is in process, there will be something like a temporary table by this name, which will have the data that is returned by this query. Okay, and we can access this uh, temporary table or this reference here anywhere in our main query or in any other sub queries. So let me just go ahead and run this query. And you can see that I'm getting the output, but there is all this decimal points here. So let me just remove that. So here, I'm just going to convert this decimal point into an int. So I'll just say cast as int and this is not mandatory I'm just trying to do it so it looks more clear so now you can see that the average salary here this column is basically coming from my average salary uh, table here which basically is a CTE or the query from my with clause and the all the three columns here is basically coming from my employee table now you can see the average salary is 65,000 and thus only the employees whose salary is greater than 65,000 that is 70,000 here 80,000 here and 90,000 here these are the only three employees who are having salary greater than 65,000 and that is why only their data has been displayed. So basically we have achieved what we wanted to do. And this is how we can use a with clause. Now, if you look carefully, you didn't really need to use a with clause in this query because you could simply find this average salary from this employee table and you could have just passed it here and the query would have worked fine and you didn't really need the first two lines here. But this was just to show you an example of what is the syntax of using a with clause. But let's proceed and go to the second query. And the second query that I'm going to work out is actually going to be a pretty good use case for using a with clause. So for this, I'm going to use a sales table. I have already created this table and this table will have information related to a sales of products uh, in four different stores. So the stores are represented by the store ID. So they we have four different store by the ID like one, two, three, and four. And then I have the store name. So let's imagine that this is a store which sells Apple products and all the different Apple products are mentioned in the product column and the quantity of this product sold is mentioned in the quantity column and the cost from each of these sales is mentioned in the cost column. Let's say you have been given a requirement where you want to fetch all the stores whose sales were better than the average sales across all the stores. So meaning you need to extract those stores whose sales figures were greater than the average sales figure of all the stores. So there are a few things that we need to do in this query. And in order to completely understand this query, let's try to split this query into a few parts. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the total sales per each store. So what is the total sales amount for each store is what we need to find first. So and I'm going to write a query to do that. And let's say I'm going to uh, store this data or call this data as something like total sales. Okay. And once you find the total sales, the second thing that you need to do is you need to find the average of all the sales across all the stores. Okay, so we are not trying to find the average of all the sales from this table, but we need to find the average of sales across all the stores. Okay, so meaning that we need to first find the total sales of each store. And once we get the total sales of each store, then we take an average over that. Okay, so let me just write that find the average sales with respect to all the stores. Okay, so this is my second requirement. And once I am able to find the average sales of, with respect to all the stores, finally, I need to use this result. So let's say for my second point, I'm just going to call it something like average sales. Okay. And finally, what I need to do is I need to find, find the stores where the total sales of that store is greater than the average sales of all the stores, average sales of all stores. So initially we'll write a query to find the total sales and then we'll try to find the average sales and then we'll try to find the uh, final query which will return our uh, expected data. We'll initially not use the with clause and then later on we'll, we'll uh, write another query to use the with clause. So you can see uh, what is the purpose of using a with clause and how using a with clause can really be helpful in certain scenarios. Okay, so let's start by first writing a query to fetch the total sales. So let's simply write this query. So I can just say select from sales and I'm going to give an alias like yes. And let's say I'm going to fetch the store ID first. 
and then I need the sum of cost because I'm trying to find the total cost for that store. So I'm just going to use the sum aggregate function and I'm going to fetch it from the column cost and I'm going to give an alias for this saying something like total sales per store. So this is the total sales per store and then I definitely need to do a group by because I need to group by each store. So I'm just going to say group by yes dot store ID. So that's all. Now if I just execute this query, you can see that I am now able to extract four different rows because one row for each store ID and the next column total sales per store is the total uh, cost that was uh, retrieved from each of these stores. Okay, so the first step is completed and we are going to call it something like, let's just reference it something like total sales. So we have done that. The next thing that we need to do is to find the average sales. Now, we don't need to find the average sales for all the sales from this table. We need to find the average sales for all of these four records. Okay, so we need to sum up these four records and take the average of this. So in order to do that, we will definitely need to reuse this query. Right. So I'm just going to copy this and let's say I'm going to say something like select from and the from I will again reuse the query that we written on the top and let's move it uh, right and I'm just going to let's give an alias to this something like X and here I don't need any other column. I just need the average sales so I can just use the aggregate function average and I just need to use this column that is a total sales per stores. So I'm just taking the average of these four records. Okay. So now if I just execute this, let's see if it works and it does work and I'm getting the data, but you can see that there is a lot of decimal points here. So I want to just remove all of this. I'm just going to use the cast function to just convert this into an int. And then I am also going to give an alias to this college uh, column, something like average sales for all stores, because this is the average sales with respect to all the stores. Correct. So this is what I have got here. And if I just execute this query now, and you can see that I'm getting the average uh, sales as 3290. So now finally, I only want to fetch those stores whose total sales is greater than this average uh, sales. So if I go back to my sales table, you can see that uh, okay, not this. Let's say if I just go back to my total sales table, you can see that my average sales were 3290 and I can see that only these two are the stores that is store number three and store number four who's having the total sales greater than 3290. So I, the, my final output should only return these two records. So let's see how I can do that. Now, initially, I'm not going to use the with clause. I'm just going to use these two sub queries to uh, return my final result. So if I had to write a query uh, just by using the above subqueries, I can just say select from and let's say I'm just going to use a star for now and I just need to use these two subqueries. So I need to use the total sales that is my first subquery. So I'm just going to put it inside the brackets and let me move it on the right. Okay, and then I'm going to give an alias to this something like total sales. Okay, and then I'm going to join it with the average sales that I have got. So my average sales is here. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And then I'm going to just place it here. And let me move this right so it becomes more clearer to see. And let me move this here. I'll move this here as well. Let's say I'm going to call this something like average sales. Okay. And finally, I need to join these two subqueries or basically these two tables in this case, and I'm going to use the on clause and I'm going to say total sales dot this column that is a total sales per store is greater than the average sales dot the average sales for all stores. Okay, so if I just do this and now if I just run this query, you can see that I'm able to extract the data that I was looking for. This is fine, but there are a few problems with this query. The problem number one is that I'm using multiple subqueries and basically I'm using a subquery inside a subquery. It kind of becomes difficult to read and you might have written the query. You might understand in future if someone else tries to read it, it kind of looks uh, too messy. That's one thing. And the second thing is that 
I'm basically using the same query or same subquery multiple times. So you can see that this total sales that I used here, I've also used the same exact query inside here as well. So basically I'm repeating the same uh, query multiple times. So SQL will end up uh, running the same uh, query multiple times, which is actually not good for performance as well. When you have this kind of scenarios, okay, so when you are basically repeating the same subquery multiple times or when you are trying to basically see that the query has become too big or too complex to read, then this is a great scenario where you should be using a with clause. So let's see how I can transform this query by using a with clause. Okay, so I'm just going to move this down and I'm going to let's say comment this out. And let me go back and let me just minimize this. Okay, so I need to now use the with clause and as I explained previously, when you're using a with clause, your query will start with the with clause. So you start with the with clause and then you need to give an alias. So we need to do a couple of things here. We need the total sales and we need the average sales. So my first with clause or my first subquery within my with clause or my first CTE is going to have the total sales. So I'm just going to give the alias as total sales and then I need to mention the list of columns and I know that this query is returning me two columns. So one is the store ID. So I'm just going to mention that. And the second column is this total sales per store. So I'm just going to mention that. And then I just need to mention the as clause and then mention the query. So the query here is basically this one that is a total sales. I'm just going to put it inside the parentheses and I'm just going to move it right and remove this semicolon. So my first query is basically done or kind of my first subquery is basically done and I'm going to give an alias to that as total sales. Now, once I have done that, the next thing that I need to do is to uh, extract the average sales. To extract the average sales, I'm going to give another alias. So let's say I'm going to call this like average underscore sales. And let me pass in the list of columns. So in this case, there's just one column that I'm returning, which is the average sales for all stores. Once I have returned that, I'm just going to pass the as clause and then I need to pass the query. Now, when I'm passing this query, I can basically copy this whole query that I written here, but actually I don't need to do that. The reason for that is if you look carefully here, I'm actually reusing the result that I got from total sales. So instead of using this subquery here, I can just straight away use this total sales because as soon as SQL will execute this whole query, it will generate, it will generate the data of this query and store it in total sales. So just by accessing this total sales alias, I will be able to access that was returned from this query. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy this query here and I'm going to place it here. And instead of using that total, uh, uh, total sales query, I'm just going to use the total sales alias. So after the from clause, that's it. So I have already got my two subqueries and I have transformed these two subqueries into my with clause. I have given two different aliases for them. Now it's time to write the main query. And in my main query is going to be pretty simple now because of this with clause. So inside my main query, I'm just going to access these two aliases or these two temporary tables. So I'm just going to say from total sales and I'm going to give uh, maybe an alias to this something like let's say TS. And then I'm going to join it with my average sales, which basically is this one here. And then I'm going to give an alias to this something like let's say AV. And then I'm going to join it by using the same command here. So that is this one. I'll just copy the whole thing here. And let me explain what it is doing. I'm just saying, okay, instead of total sales, I have given the alias like TS. And so of average sales, I have given the alias like AV. I'm just telling to fetch all the records where the total sales per store is greater than the average sales for all the stores. And I need to fetch, let's say, all the records from both these tables, okay? So now if I just execute this query, and if you just see the data here, you can see that if I execute the query again, you can see that I'm getting the same exact output. So basically, we have just used with clause to do the same thing that we did with a query which was just using the subquery. So let me just try to show this here again. And let me just remove this comment and let me just show you the difference. Okay. So this is with, with clause. Okay. And then I have this uh, subqueries. Now, both these queries are right and there is nothing like one is right and one is wrong. The only difference is that when I did not use the with clause, I was basically using a particular uh, subquery multiple times, which actually is not a good practice. Secondly, I feel 
this query here, here the select statement or the main select statement is so simple. You just do a select uh, some columns and then in the from clause there is hardly nothing here. You're just joining the tables or the temporary tables that you created in your with clause. So this becomes very easy to read. As soon as someone sees this, they know that, okay, total sales, there is something that is generated from this subquery and there is something that is generated from the average sales subquery. And then you are just joining these two subqueries by this condition to return the final data. Whereas when you try to read a subquery like this, you can see that in the inside the from clause you have a subquery and then in the you are joining it with another subquery which again is having another nested subquery. So kind of becomes confusing to read and this is a very I would say a simple example when you start writing more complex and more uh, big queries uh, if you do not use with clause it kind of can get very messy. This is uh, how we can use with clause. I hope this was clear. Now. There are several advantages of using with clause and one of the very first advantage that I can think of is that by writing a query using a with clause you can make your query more uh, easily readable and also it becomes easier to maintain as well as debug. For example let's say you're writing a very complex SQL query or you're writing a very big SQL query the query might just not be very easy to read and other than you if anyone else is trying to understand that query it might be a hard time for them. So just by using a with clause your query can just easily become very much readable and you can break your big query into uh, multiple different sections. So that's definitely one advantage. The second advantage of using a with clause is definitely the improvement in performance that you can get by using a with clause in your SQL query. Now the way how SQL treats a with clause is that as soon as your query is executed the first thing that SQL will execute is the query or the subquery that is inside your with clause and it's going to return that data and store it in your temporary table. Basically not exactly a temporary table uh, but something like a temporary table. So it's going to be referenced by the name that you uh, provide to your city. Now if you use this particular city anywhere in your query it's just going to re reuse the data which is already generated in the very beginning of the query. This can really improve the performance. There are several other advantages as well of with clause especially if you are using uh, recursive queries then uh, using with clause can really be helpful. If you're not sure of what recursive queries is then please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to make a separate video about recursive queries in the near future. And also in many other cases if you are not sure of how to solve a particular problem using SQL then you might be tempted to create a weave or a temporary table. In that case using a with clause can really uh, make sure that you are able to achieve the same uh, result uh, without creating a weave or a temporary table but just by using a with clause. Now what are the different scenarios where you should be using a with clause? So ideally you can basically use with clause anytime in your query whenever you're using a subquery. But actually you don't really need to use with clause each and every time you're uh, writing a subquery. The ideal scenario of using a with clause would be uh, when you're trying to use a particular subquery multiple times. That can be a great scenario of just putting that subquery into a with clause. So you just uh, have to tell SQL to execute that part of the code just once and the data will be readily available to be used or reused uh, any number of times in your main query. The second scenario I can think of is when you're writing a very complex SQL query or if you're writing a very big SQL query you would notice that the query kind of becomes very uh, complex to also read okay and not only for you but in future if someone else wants to read that query it kind of becomes very hard to understand what exactly is written. And this is a great uh, scenario where you should be using a with clause. You can uh, break down your uh, big query or a very complex query into multiple different sections by using a with clause and it kind of makes the query uh, very much easy to read and also very easy to maintain as well as debug in the future. Finally, you should also consider using with clause whenever you want to improve the performance of your query. So let's say you're working or using a table which is having millions of data, but from that millions of data, you're only interested in a few thousands of data based on certain filters. Now, if you use this uh, table in your main from clause then it can happen that it will uh, basically process all the millions of records and due to this the performance might take a hit. So a rather better approach would be to use this table along with its filter conditions in the with clause. So in that way when the, the whole query is executed in the very first step itself SQL would, uh, would generate the result of this uh, table that is from millions of records it would generate the thousands of records that you need based on the filter conditions that you have given. And then once you have these thousands of data available in your CT or in your with clause query then you can just reuse it in anywhere in your main query. Now this will definitely improve the performance because instead of processing a millions of records it will end up processing only thousands of records which definitely will improve the performance. 
I hope all of this was useful and you learned something from this video. If you did, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up and also give me a feedback about what you felt about this video. Also, if you have any other SQL complex concepts which you would like me to cover, then please leave a comment below. Thank you and see you soon in the next one. Bye.